Hello and welcome to the next topic in the advanced C Sharp course brought to you by your friends here at Tuts Plus. Now in this lesson I want to take you through a rather simple topic but it's definitely a nice to have in the world of C Sharp especially when you're dealing with link queries and you're dealing with objects that are sometimes rather large or a little bit more difficult to deal with. I'm going to introduce to you the topic of anonymous types. So let's go ahead and jump into some code and I'm going to show you a little bit about what anonymous types are and how they're going to help you out. So as you can see here we're back in Visual Studio and I've created a basic console application and I've created a person class like we've dealt with so many times before. It's got a number of properties, first name, last name, age, and a couple filler properties just so I could bulk this class up a little bit to show you how anonymous types are really going to help you. Then I've created a very basic list of the person types called people and I have a John and Jane Doe, a Billy and Sally Johnson, and then a Rupert last name. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to write a link query that's going to pull out a few people from this list and output them to the console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a var result and I'm going to write a simple link query that we've covered in a previous topic. And if you're unfamiliar with link, definitely go back and take a look at the last lesson on link. So I'm going to say from P in people, I want to select where P dot last name is equal to Doe. So I'm going to pull out everybody that's within the Doe family and I'm going to select that person and I'm going to put them into my result collection. And then I want to loop through them var P in result and I'm just going to do a simple console right line P dot first name and I'm going to concatenate a space and then throw on the last name there as well. So I'm going to save that, Control F5. So this really shouldn't be anything new to you if you watched the link lesson or if you're familiar with how link works. We've been given John Doe and Jane Doe. So now I want to be able to tweak this a little bit because if you noticed when I went through and did the console right line, when I hit the P dot and I got the IntelliSense, I was given... Uh, it's still not a very long list, but as you can see, there's a lot of fluff in here. So there is age, which is, it's in there, but I don't really care about it. And then I have first name and last name. And then I've got these other properties in here and these other methods. And there's a lot of things going on in here that I really don't care about for the purposes of my code that I'm trying to write right now. So it would be kind of nice if I could just trim all that excess stuff out and just be left with the meat or the interesting data or only the things that I'm concerned about. Well, that's where anonymous types come in and that's going to allow me to whittle down my result set even a little bit more. So I'm just going to undo my change here so we're back to first name, last name, control F5. Okay, we still work. So now what I would like to do is in my result query, in my link query here, I want to trim down this object, this P, into something a little bit smaller that I can work with and still be able to get my code to a point where it's going to execute the way that I need it to. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to select an anonymous type out of this result or out of this particular P or person class. And the way you do that is very similar to how you would create any sort of instances of any other types that you deal with, is you start with the new keyword. So I'm going to say new, but because this is an anonymous type, there's no name, there's no class, there's no type that I specify here to say what type of a new object this is going to be. And I chose the word object there for a reason, because behind the scenes, all the compiler cares about is that it's going to create another object for me on the fly that's going to inherit from the object class, just like everything else does within the C-sharp language and the .NET framework. So I'm going to say new, and I don't need to give it a name. I simply do open curly braces and close curly braces. Now within here, I can specify any number of named properties that I want but only properties, that is one of the limitations of anonymous types, they only allow you to create properties. So there's no methods, there's no events, there's no delegates, nothing like that, only properties. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to differentiate this a little bit from my person class where I have a first name and a last name, and we're simply going to say f name is equal to p dot first name, and l name is equal to p dot last name. So now I've created an anonymous type within the select statement of my link query to have two properties, an f name which is going to be set to the person dot first name and an l name to be set to the person dot last name. Now as you can see here, my for each 
loop has broken here in that I have red squigglies under first name and last name because now P, if I hover over P, you can see that this is an anonymous type and that it's a new string F name and string L name that there is no more first name property, there is no last name property. So now if I come in here and I backspace a little bit and do P dot, now I'm only seeing the properties that I specified within my anonymous type creation, the F name and the L name. So I've trimmed out all that excess stuff that I don't care about or I don't need within this portion of my code. So I can say now F name and P dot L name. I can save this and do a control F5 and I'm going to get the same result. So as you can see here, now I'm just dealing with a little bit less data and I don't have to get my, my objects cluttered up and I don't need all these extra properties that I don't care about. I'm only working with the data that I need. So that's kind of a nice little feature. But what are the restrictions of anonymous types? Well, there are a couple and as I mentioned before, you can only assign properties to these anonymous types. Another restriction is that once I've created this anonymous type, the properties within them are read only. So if I tried to, in my for each loop, set the F name equal to Bob and try to save and build this, it's going to fail because the properties or indexers on anonymous types cannot be assigned to their read only. So once you create this anonymous type, that's it. You can't do anything else with it. It is basically immutable or the properties within it are immutable. Another limitation is that you really can't pass these to methods as parameters or get them out as return types. Now you can kind of fake it a little bit, but since there's no type for this new value that's with coming out of this result, I can't really write a method that's going to take this P here as a parameter. You, you can't specify, there's really no type there. Now you can kind of coerce this a little bit if you'd like because all types within the C-sharp language inherit from the object class or the object type. So if you really wanted to, you could create a new object and call it OBJ and you could set it equal to, and you can explicitly cast a P to an object. You could do something like this and that'll work and it'll save and you can build it and that's fine. But basically at this point now, you've lost any sort of knowledge of what the properties on that anonymous type are. So they're gone because objects at its very base don't know what those are. And when you start to cast in that direction, you lose that. So yeah, you could cast that and pass that object to another method as an object or pass it out as a return type as an object, but that gets a little confusing and you don't always remember what the types are. And what are you supposed to cast it out of as you can't once it's become an object I don't know what type this P is I can't I can't explicitly cast to an anonymous type so so things get a little hairy in there so like I said its sweet spot is definitely when you're starting to work with link queries and you're working with objects that have a lot of properties and methods and that and you just don't care about those things you just want a few simple properties then definitely go with the anonymous types in your select statement by just specifying the new keyword without a name and then just within curly braces specify whatever property name you want and assign their initial values and once they're set they're that way forever. So it's kind of a nice little feature definitely use it in those cases and I'll see you in the next lesson.